Hello everyone, Gareth Master 974 back again today doing a showcase video I guess and today I'm going to be looking into source engine code leaks and a individual by the name of Sadfi2259x big ups and shout out for giving me this idea and I'm completely you know not going to talk about the recent January 2023 leaks where supposedly about 60 gigabytes of content related to Team Fortress 2 leaked apparently through like discord or something um but i'm not gonna delve into that because that is pretty much irrelevant and i didn't know that was going to happen by the way and i didn't delay this video knowing that that was going to happen but um what sad fee i'm going to refer to them that as that but um, what they pointed me to was this github page right here now it says that it's a version of the source engine from around 2017 that was leaked in 2020 and it is worth noting that this is not for commercial purposes so disclaimer on that front this is leaked code that I'm going to be looking into so just keep that in mind you might be violating license agreements or something but you know just be really careful about doing stuff with this and as long as you keep it free as well then you shouldn't really encounter too many issues but in terms of encountering issues this version actually doesn't use like a standard batch file formula what they use is something called WAF WAF and they give you some instructions on how to build for Linux build for Windows and on Windows I can't seem to build because I get issues like um, well, it's basically because you need to download Python and I get one that goes something like you cannot import name order dict. Order dict. Now that's in Python, but it's not in the version of Python that I have for some reason. And if I use something like Jupyter Notebook, which uses Python, then I don't get any errors. So question mark on that one. But basically, I can't seem to make any sort of Visual Studio solution. And if you look into it, there's a hell of a lot of stuff here there's so many different projects to delve into that it, it would be nice to get them all into one place but it, again it's just a lot of work to do and especially when the files they provide and the instructions they provide doesn't really work now i did manage to get it to work on linux hence why i'm on ubuntu and it's under this source engine and build section now i have no idea what i'm supposed to do from here from linux they don't really tell you what to do in that regard they just say this is what you do and then here you go you have compiled files apparently so if we go into the engine for example you can see we've got a load of dot o files and yeah i don't really know where to go from here so let's just say i give up on dealing with the 2017 code now when doing preparation for this video I just searched into Google source engine leak and I got a completely different github page this time it seems to be Team Fortress 2 code so the, two, the Team Fortress 2 source engine code from around 2018 um, big ups to Tyler McVicker aka Valve News Network and it looks pretty much exactly the same as the 2017 code over here Except there are some differences, there are some files that are present here which aren't present in this version. And this actually does have a batch file which creates all the projects, except I end up with issues with that because some of the files needed to create some of the projects don't exist. So you can't create some of the projects and because you can't create some of the projects, you end up with a failure to even create the everything solution and it's got the same problem as the 2017 code that I just showed you in that there's just a load of projects you have to deal with. Now you might be wondering why am I even talking about any of this stuff? Well it's to raise awareness that this sort of stuff exists so you can look into it if you want to and one of the interesting things is that in both of these cases if you go into game and for example client you can see portal and half-life one and Counter-Strike, yeah, you gain access to the portal source code, which is interesting to say the least. Now it does seem to only be the portal one code, so it's not portal two stuff unfortunately, but 
it's nice to know that you gain access to at least some of the codes of games that haven't been officially sort of released by Valve for the people to look into. So if this is something that's interesting to you, then you can take a look into it if you want to. But I did mention Sadfi earlier as someone who helped me to do this video because they decided to execute a 400 IQ play, shall we say. And their great idea was to try and backport some of these features from the later source code leaks and put it into the 2013 source code engine. So as they say here, it's the official distribution of the 2013 code, but trying to add in features such as game UI and launcher, as you can see from these folders over here, you got launcher and launcher main, and that is the executable file that the game uses. So you can effectively create your own hl2.exe, but you can you you know you can go into it a little more, change it from pointing to Half Life 2 to a mod name or something completely different. So it's interesting that it's as it is right now. Um, it's an interesting premise, shall we say? Um, but as they point out, there's a load of files that don't really work right off the bat, like Game UI, Hammer engine and some other stuff and what they said to me is that at least with custom launcher stuff which is all in here that you could potentially bypass valve anti-cheat and load cheats into games probably multiplayer games don't know if that's a uh, steam official servers or not but um it's interesting to note that you can create your own .exe file now they go through the instructions here and right now it's only app framework launcher and launcher main and so I managed to do this on my system. So what I decided to do was use a stock 2013 mod and put some of this stuff in and as you can see I've experimented with game UI and hammer and it doesn't really work too well. But let's load up the everything solution and just delve into some of this and hopefully some people who are experts more than I am, can actually look into this and see if there's any way that you can get some of this stuff to work. So the first thing is obviously going to be the launcher code, which is not in here apparently. I swear it should be here, but it's not. But you can add it really easily. So you just go add existing projects. It loads up your source code distribution, so you can go to SRC and somehow I've not even got the launcher stuff in here. But if you did, you could just go into the folder and then it's got, you know, VC++ project. So you can just add that. So in this case, I've got hammer. This is the hammer launcher. And if you look into it, if it takes a little while to load up, then, um, you know, you can actually begin to look into some of these files, but you get a load of errors because there's probably external classes or external functions that you need to have and you know obviously it's from the 2017 code that hasn't been copy pasted over so it's going to cause issues so for example hammer.cpp we can go into here and you can see right off the bat there's errors because it can't find engine launcher api and then you go down it doesn't know what lpc tstr is it doesn't know what editor util convert path is so you get a whole load of errors and that means hammer is not going to compile because it needs to know what these parameters are and they aren't defined. So hammer.cpp is littered, completely littered with errors. So there's got to be a way that you can figure out how to solve that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where the project is. You can just copy and paste the stuff from this advanced source editor over here into source 2013 and you'd gain access to a custom launcher I've probably done it in my burst there we go yes yeah, this burst project so you've got launcher and launcher main so what i could actually do is go into game and as you can see you've got hl2.exe if we go under the bin folder we've got launcher.dll so that's actually kind of good but the downside is if i try to use hl2.exe it says that it failed to load the launcher DLL and the specific you know, the module the module cannot be found. God, I'm fucking up with my words. I've got to learn to talk better. But the thing is, 
if you look into it, it actually says that this is where the executable file is and it tries to find launcher.dll in respect to a bin folder that's in this location. So if you go into the bin folder, I just said there's launcher.dll, but the executable file is saying that launcher.dll cannot be found, even though it should be because it's in the right place. So there's a lot of work to do. Let's just put it that way. There's a hell of a lot of work to do. And, you know, I appreciate the effort of Sad FIFA trying to get this to work. And there's a long road to go. There's a lot of stuff that still needs to be added and a lot of stuff that you need to dig into to see if it even works in the first place. So one of the things that I looked into was engine and under engine, you're supposed to have public and private folders and it's just not here. However, if you go into the 2018 version, you can do pretty much the exact same thing. And this time you see that all the files are there in the right place. So you probably want to use a 2018 version of the code of the engine code anyway, to put it back into source 2013 and see if that works. But then you need to make sure you get all of the external dependencies as well, like the engine VPC file. You can dig into it and then it tells you like all of the include files, all of the libraries that are used. So you can pretty much figure out where these are if you need to copy them over from, you know, the source directory, shall we say, or any other external folders that, you know, you think that you could just copy and paste the engine code over, but it's probably not gonna work as easily as that. So, Anyway, I've rambled and ranted and raved about this. And so I hope you found this somewhat informative, somewhat helpful. And look into the advanced source engine over here on GitHub. And what I hope to see over time is that there's more stuff that's added to this. There's more things that you can add into source 2013 with the end goal, I guess, being that you can create a source mod that runs independently of Steam. And so how cool would that be? You can create your own launcher, create your own engine.dll files, create your own stdshaders.dll files in your typical, you know, bin folder and all that sort of stuff. Of course, the thing is you have to make it work in the first place and I'm having issues with that. So maybe someone with more expertise than me can look into this and even see if you can port it back into 2013 in the first place. It's an interesting premise, so big ups to Sadfi for recommending this video idea. I apologise if it's a pretty crappy video to be honest, I know I've made a load of fuck ups and errors, but you know what, it is what it is at the end of the day, and without holding you back for too long, just take care out there, peace out, and see you later.